think we're getting this. So uh, we're just waiting for Ralph to join us and uh, we'll be getting started. So hi everybody, I see some people waving. Thank you for waving. Uh, I think I have it now. There it oh, goes. <laughs> it was a little technical difficulty, and I realized I didn't put my AirPods on. Which... Can you hear me okay? Yep, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Uh, I can. Uh, the transition to the... Um, yes, I can. So, how are you doing today? I'm great. How are you? Good. Um, so, we're going to get started. I am... So I'm going to do some introductions and then uh, I will ask some questions. So uh, first I want to say welcome to Intuitive Motion Pilates Move Well video series. Our guest, Ralph, uh, is here waiting on hand for introductions. Before we get started with introductions, let me mention the first five thumbs up in the comment section to win a free virtual Pilates mat class with Intuitive Motion Pilates. So please thumbs up. Now. I would like to say hi, I'm Tracy Matthews, Pilates Master and Movement Educator of Intuitive Motion Pilates. Welcome to my Move Well video series on Instagram Live. Uh, let me introduce you to a long-term client of mine, generously sharing his movement and injury journey. Ralph is a retired lawyer and a wonderful family man with a wife and three adult children. He found me and began his Pilates practice in the winter of 2013. Ralph, before we go to your Pilates origin story, let's discuss the recent transition from Pilates training on the machines to our new normal with virtual Pilates. Sure. Um, thank you, Tracy, So, for that nice introduction. Anyway, the transition to um, virtual Pilates from being in the studio with Tracy was not as complicated as I thought it might be. I needed a couple of props like a yoga mat, but really nothing very serious to get going. And once we figured out the technology, we really started right in and it was it was really good. Um, I have to say that mat Pilates is a lot more difficult than using the reformer and the tower, but I've been doing Pilates for quite a while now, so I guess I was ready for it. But it I feel a lot stronger, so I think it's been it's been a really good experience for me. So I, I think it's there's no problem at all as far as I'm concerned with the transition to virtual Pilates from in person Pilates. Yeah, no, it has its benefits, and, and I've always incorporated Matt into the machine classes as well, uh, and I think mm -hmm. that really showed up when we had to do all Matt. Uh, so I was glad that that put up for everyone, and especially for you. And then um, I'd like to go into your injury and surgery experience that brought you to Pilates. Okay, sure. Um, I'm a tw I am now a 28-year cancer survivor, which is actually quite a long time when you think about it. When I was sick 28 years ago, I had very serious abdominal surgery, and I woke up with a gigantic incision and 39 staples in my abdomen, in 2012, that surgery needed to be redone because the incision was giving out, which happens. So there I was in my mid fifties, I had to have the surgery redone. I again woke up with 39 staples in my abs. And after the pain went away, which didn't take that long, I realized that I had been really injured um, the second time around. I really couldn't feel my abdomen at all. I couldn't really feel much either between my ribs and my pelvis. I really could feel very little. And my range of movement had been severely compromised. And I knew that I had to seriously rehabilitate myself because it was going to be now or never. And that's the injury that got me to, that got me to Pilates. It was a pretty serious one. And what, what was the rehab recovery process for you when you found Pilates? Like, well, how, you know, once you began your movement training, what was your initial experience? Sure. Um, you know, 
I, I think my doctors were all terrific, but they're not really interested in anything other than sewing you back up and sending you out into the world. So I had to begin to figure that out on my own. It took a long time for me to heal, and I was very nervous about injuring myself. But once I began to heal, I start, the first thing I started to do was to swim, which is something I had always done, and it was, seemed to be the most gentle exercise I could do. Then, but it didn't really improve my injury in any way. And it didn't really help me find the center in my body or my abdomen any better. So I eventually, once I got a clean bill of health, began to talk about what I might do to rehabilitate myself. The first person I spoke to was obviously my wife, who is a great source of all wisdom and knowledge. And she directed me to Tracy, who she had known for a while and been doing Pilates with for a while. So once I checked that out with my GP, who told me she also thought Pilates was a great idea. With some real fear and trepidation, I contacted Tracy and I went to see her in her studio and we started we started to work together at that point in 2013. Yeah, and it's it's been a journey and it, and you put in the work. So what in Pilates and somatics really helped you? Does anything stand out specifically? Well, in, you know, in Pilates, I mean, it's there, there's so much, I could talk for hours about this, so I'm gonna to try to be, you know, concise. When I first saw Tracy, I couldn't really bend, I couldn't really twist. I had a lot of trouble getting out of a chair. I had a lot of trouble getting out of a bed or getting back into that chair or back into that bed. I couldn't really reach to the side very well or reach above my head very well. I was really injured. And now I can do all of those things, which is remarkable as far as I'm concerned. These are things that I took for granted before this surgery that I think that most people who are listening would certainly take that for granted to be able to bend over when you're sitting down and tie your shoes is, is not really a hard thing to do. But for me, it was virtually impossible. And Pilates helped me to do all of those things again. And then Pilates, as I continued, really strengthened my abdomen in a way that I think it was never strong before. It took a tremendous amount of effort and it's an ongoing process. But I find now I can do all sorts of complicated exercises that I couldn't do in the past. I'm thinking about one that, that Tracy calls Sphinx that, you know, I think that I can do it now. Five years ago, it would have been unimaginable to me. And even some of the exercises that I've been doing for a while, like the ab series, I do now with much more strength and much more stamina and I can do more of it and I can do it faster. It, it, it's, when I think about how far I've come, it's really a remarkable journey that I've taken with Tracy. Now as to somatics, that was really interesting too, because as I said before, it was as if my abdomen had been erased, that I was not connected at all from the top to the bottom. The other thing that the surgeon did, which I didn't mention, but I'll mention now, is that he also moved my belly button. So my yeah, center... Yeah, that was a big deal. <laughs> yeah, my, you know, most of us sort of take for granted that we have a belly button and that's the center of our bodies and everything works from that. But my belly button had moved and it was, my abdomen was completely numb so I couldn't find my center and I was confused where my center was and we would do these exercises where Tracy would say point at your belly button I would close my eyes and I would miss I just didn't even know where it was anymore somatics really helped me find myself in my body again to really re-inhabit my body in a way that was as your instructor, it was a really interesting experience in teaching you the somatic perspective of centers and connecting your body back to having a center because it was MIA, it was missing. And, um, and eventually your body kind of adapted to the new center that the, the surgeon gave you because he, he repositioned your belly buttons. You still have one. It's just not where it used to be. Um, right. And it was really interesting to see how 
that transition of healing, the body's just resilient. It just it, it just finds a way to heal and finds a way to work and come together. And if you give it the right information, it just makes the journey easier. Um, so what activities uh, well, can you do now? Well, we, we kind of covered that, that activities that, well, maybe not. We, we covered kind of Pilates activities, but what activities can you do now outside of Pilates? Uh, I mean, the getting out of bed is obviously that's a lot of walking and hiking and all that stuff has improved tremendously, but you also cross train. So tell us about like how you uh, partnered Pilates with other fitness programs. All right. Well, there's a lot to answer to that question too. So before we even, before we even get to the, cause I'm much more active now, um, but before we even get to the cross training, which I I'll get to, you know, I'm still swimming. And I swim with much more strength and I hold my body much in a much more coherent way in the water than I was. And that's great. Um, yes, I'm walking and hiking and I seem to have a lot more stamina than I used to have. And my posture is much better because my posture was obviously affected by all of the surgery too. I think that when you're wounded in your abdomen, you tend to kind of hunch over and protect yourself. Um, it took a while to kind of, the somatics also helped with that too. The notion I could just stand up straight and breathe was, you know, something I had to learn how to do as well. So I swim and I do cardio. Um, I walk and I hike. I'm pretty active on the whole. And the other thing I did, not right away, but once the Pilates kicked in and I was much stronger, I started to cross train at the Y with um, a trainer, the Y in our neighborhood in Brooklyn, and I started doing strength training. And that was a really interesting compliment because we had already done all that ab work. And when I did, when I would do ab work with my trainer, she would go, you know, wow, you really have that. And I said, well, you know, I've been doing this for a while now. I kind of figured it out, but it was nice to do the other strength work. I think the Pilates work was really complimentary for that. And then the strength work was really complimentary for the Pilates. So they worked really nicely hand in hand and we, you know, I've made, a, I've made a lot of progress there too. So that's been, that's been really a good experience for me. So you've done different cross training, you've done Pilates and you're, what was the like biggest movement challenge that you felt during the process of transitioning from not feeling your abs, not having a belly button to connecting to your body. Do, does anything stand out? Well, as you know, um, anything involving twisting yes. was just really, really hard for me. So you would say just, you know, twist your upper body to the right a little bit. And I would like think really hard and shut my eyes and try and be completely unable to move at all, right? Or bend your body, bend my body to the side. It's still something that I have to really think very hard about. Those movements were, all, you know, were very, very difficult for me. And the fact that I can do them now, I, I think is remarkable. That was a huge challenge for me. Uh, whatever that injury was, it really affected the muscles I needed to do those two activities. And honestly, you can't live a full life if you can't twist your body or bend to the side. So that was tremendous, I think. Um, everything's a challenge. I, I don't think that, I, as I say often to Tracy, we've been doing variations of some of the same exercises for years now. We just do harder variations. And I'll say to her, this really doesn't get any easier. That's the thing about Pilates. It's hard and it's hard and then it's still hard, you know, <laughs> so, but I like that because I can do it now. So I feel happy, right? It's, it's yeah. a great feeling of success. Yeah. So you definitely uh, have put in the work and uh, compared to where you were when I met you and where you are now, it's, it's just a beautiful story of recovery and healing. And I'm privileged to be your instructor and, and watch the journey and participate in it myself. Um, you know, it's, it, it, there's been so much from my perspective in, in terms of meeting you and like 
where, you know, whenever I teach people Pilates, there's the first learning the, the, the verbal vocabulary, but also the movement vocabulary, right? You have to work, learn the language of Pilates. It, it, that's like a, the first thing that you have to teach people. Like, what does it mean to do the hundreds? What does it mean? Like, how many parts are it in everything? But if you have somebody that doesn't have abs, like they, they're numb and they're, they're, you know, kind of not there right now, not connecting, they need neuromuscular feedback. They need to take the slow road. They need patience and, and time to heal and connect and nurture their way back to coming together. And you just have to revisit it and revisit it and do things and kind of get them going at their own pace. And every every injury journey has its own timing. Uh, and the, the lack of abdominal connection and finding that control again and seeing that transition is just amazing. Thank you. Uh, and, your... and, and it, it was. It, it, and, and the thing is like that I, I do want to mention is that you were luckily in your injury story, you were not in pain like you couldn't move well like you didn't have um control over your coordination or your muscles in, in the beginning but you weren't suffering with debilitating pain so it was a very different rehab experience in that sense right mm. when you have pain and you can't move that's like a whole other thing um and that's i usually work in tandem with pts so you know, when someone has more pain. So that's why it was great that Pilates was a perfect resource for you. Um, I was wondering if there's um, anything else you would like to add and share with our viewers um, before we wrap up. Sure. I mean, first of all, I think we haven't done hundreds for a while, Tracy, now that you mentioned them. So I think <laughs> next time I see you, we should do hundreds again just to see what those are like. I'll, 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 I'll rest up. I'll rest up, okay? So I'll do that. <laughs> No, but more, but more seriously, um, there's something that really needs to be said about Tracy as, as somebody who helps you with rehab, which is that intuitively, but I mean, also there's, she does a lot of study, but also somehow intuitively at the same time, she really kind of understands what an injured body is going through. And with an injured body, sometimes there's an injured psyche too, and what that injured psyche is going through. And she was really able to, to help me understand how to live in my body again after that tremendous injury. It was remarkable. And whether it was giving me very simple exercises that would help me begin to move or taking a more complicated exercise and breaking it down in a simple way so I could do it or just cueing me. I mean, there are, I, there are, I remember when we first started, we would try exercises and she would cue me you know, move your abs like this, and I would try, and I would go, mm, no. So she tried, well, now think about this. And I go, mm, no. Like the, the fourth cue or the fifth cue, and all of a sudden I was doing it. So I think that she's creative and remarkably intuitive. And I don't think I would have made this kind of progress with somebody who just said to me, do it. You know, like boot camp, just do it. You know, I, I couldn't do it, right? But now I can so it's the, all credit to all credit to her for her ability to really understand how to how to manage my injury in a way that really helped me rehab it. I I don't know if Instagram is catching on my blushing here, but thank you for all the high praise. You're welcome. You're welcome. I <laughs> so, mean it all. <laughs> thank you. No, it, it it's really been an honor, and I I one of the things I always say is that my. My clients, the people I work with, are my best teachers. You teach me how to be a better teacher every session. Still to this day, with all the training and know-how that I have and intuition that I use in my practice, I, I will go to work and in three sessions, I will, I'm sure to learn something new of, that I can share across all my clients and, and bring to the work and practice daily. It, it's just amazing how vast the material is and the information is. So um, before um, I forget, I just want to mention, we will be here live again Tuesday, July 21st with another Move Well video guest, Sandra. 
Uh, she's going to discuss her incredible recovery story from hospice syndrome, uh, colloquially known as fatty knee or fat cat syndrome. And you don't want to miss it because knees, there's so many knees and everyone knows about like ACL surgery and um, meniscus and everything. And I probably will have some people that have those injuries down the road. But this one's a unique one. It's a very specific group population of people. And I was not familiar with it when I met Sandra and I had to learn about it as I trained her. And uh, it, it's a more recent uh, client of mine and uh, her story is very interesting. So please tune in in two weeks for that. And I just wanna thank you Ralph so much for your time and joining me here for my first Instagram live interview. And um, everyone for joining us today. I please um, take a moment to follow Intuitive Motion Pilates on Instagram if you haven't already. And thank you for coming to our first Move Well video series on Instagram Live. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, now I gotta figure out how to end. <laughs> Bye. Bye.